have a little bit of a unique mounting situation on the enclosure for our smart manufacturing cell. And I'm gonna to need to use a side disconnect. Now I have never actually used a side disconnect before and I may never again, so I figure I better record it. First, let's talk about the problem and why I'm doing this. The control panel on this is on a slide out drawer and typically your disconnect will be somewhere around here. If I have it there, when I push it in, then our disconnect's gonna be over here where it's gonna be difficult to reach. Now, I'm not even going to cite code on this one. We're just going to cite common sense on this one. That's that's not a good mounting position there. So what I want to do is I want to put the disconnect right here and operate it from the side. Now, we do have a video on how to do a through-the-door disconnect like you would normally do with this. But let's see if we can figure out how to do this one. My main breaker is a Siemens 3VA6. And one thing I love about this breaker is there is every accessory you can imagine for it. And so yeah, we gotta look at through the catalog and there is a side mount disconnect. So we will bolt this to the front of our breaker and then our disconnect will come out the side of it. And to start with, I'm gonna remove the two screws that hold the front of the breaker on. And then we will pop this off. And notice I already have accessories in here. Even with these accessories installed, this side mount will work great. And right away, I realized that I do not have an easy way to measure from the square hole here down. So the next thing I did is I actually cut a short piece of the square shaft. And I've got it where I can slide it into here. And let's install it again. And now I can stick a tape measure in here and get the height measurement. And I can also get the measurement from the top of the panel. Now, when we go to measure on the outside, don't forget to allow for the thickness of the control panel. Now, typically, I would lay this entire thing out, mark my extra four holes, and we would be off and drilling. But I'm a little more hesitant on this one, so I am actually just going to drill the center hole here and see if my square shaft lines up with that hole. Now be very careful while you're drilling, remove the side mount option. And I also like to put a little paper in there just to protect everything from shavings. And then I'm gonna use one of these ideal hole cutters and down in the description, you'll find a link that has a lot of useful resources, including different ways to cut holes through enclosures. Unfortunately, it is in the middle, but if it wasn't, that would give us the opportunity to at least adjust a little bit. That way the disconnect lines up nicely. And if there's ever a time that you definitely do not want your drill to walk, it's on me. So I'm going to use a center punch and put a mark on all four of these. And then every time you drill a hole, even if you get ready to drill another hole, go ahead and take the time, vacuum your shavings up. I mean, one shaving, one shaving can make for a really bad day if you let this magic smoke out of components. Then arguably with all of them, the most difficult part is figuring out your shaft length. And for this one, it says to insert the shaft without the plastic on the end of it. And then it should be two and a half millimeters shorter than protruding out of the pan. I'm going to pick a piece of gun around and use it as a straight edge. And I'm going to put a mark right at the edge of it. And then I'll measure two and a half millimeters back. And that's where I'm going to cut this. Then I can reinstall the plastic piece, and remember, this is plastic. There's a torque specification on it. You use your torque driver and torque it to the right torque. And then think about which way should be on and off. So I do want this facing this way. I'm gonna figure out which way this goes in. And then I'll pull it back out. Line it up in there. Put this back on the front, and it does work. So now I'll go ahead and take my tape off and put my screws in. And now as I turn the disconnect on, you see the breaker switch on, turn it off. And it gives you a nice indicator here. We can see that we're tripped right there, on and off. So there's how you can install a side disconnect. It's the first one I've ever done and it did turn out pretty good. And if you would like to learn how to install it through the door disconnect and some other great control panel tips, then click here.